If the universe really were billions of years old, the galaxies should have flown apart by now. And just so that they can hold on to their precious theory of billions of years, evolutionists just made up something called dark matter. I must admit that before I had heard this argument, I was unaware of the concept of galaxies flying apart. That prompted me to investigate. As far as we can see, the galaxies shouldn't be together. Physicists have been able to determine the amount of mass in galaxies and the speed at which their stars are moving. What they have found is that the stars, dust, and gas that we can see don't appear to have enough mass to hold galaxies together. In addition to that, the stars on the outside of galaxies are actually moving at the same speed as the stars on the inside. The issue is not that they should have flown apart by now, it's that they aren't flying apart at all. It wouldn't matter if they were created last week or several trillion years ago. They just aren't flying apart. The question plaguing science is not, why are they still together? It's what's keeping them together now. There are only two reasonable answers. Either the invisible hand of God is there holding the galaxy together, or there is more matter in these galaxies, therefore more gravity, and that matter doesn't seem to emit light at all. In other words, it's dark, hence the name dark matter. So we have two competing theories, an invisible hand of God and matter we can't see because it emits no light. Of the two theories, one of them is testable. If there were, in fact, more mass to a galaxy, galaxy than we can see, and that mass is enough to provide enough gravity to keep the galaxy together, we should be able to see the effects of that extra mass and gravity by its effects on the space around it. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, that much mass should have enough gravity to warp the space around it, causing a phenomenon called gravitational lensing. Essentially, the gravity of a galaxy should warp space enough that it would curve the path of any light that passes by it. If the galaxy happens to be between our planet and another galaxy, we should see multiple images of the further galaxy due to gravitational lensing, due to the curvature of the light from that galaxy not completely refracting. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what we see. In 1979, telescopes observed Q0957-561, what initially appeared to be two quasars turned out to be a double image of one quasar. In 1985, QSO 2237-0305 was observed, this time in a quadruple image known as an Einstein cross. In 1987, MG 11310456 was observed, which was one of the first of what came to be known as an Einstein ring. All of these are the result of the same phenomena, the difference being a result of the distance and shape of the intervening gravitational source. So what we know is, there is in fact more mass in a galaxy than the stars, gas, and dust we see. Whatever this extra mass is, it originates from something that doesn't emit, reflect, nor absorb light. You can call it whatever you want, but it definitely isn't bright, so scientists call it dark matter until we can find out exactly what it is. And that's an example of how creationism taught me real science. Learn more about the real science behind other creationist arguments by watching other episodes. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may be the subject of a later video. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it. <laughs>